Welcome in to a very special edition of the PHNX Coyotes Podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcast, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Petey. Alongside me, as always, is Craig Morgan. And after waiting for weeks, <laughs> the news has finally broken. The Arizona State Land Board of Appeals has finally posted the auction date for the land sale in North Phoenix. Craig, how has your day been today? Buddy. There are days where I wonder what the hell I'm doing, and there are days where I'm sure I'm crazy for doing what I'm doing, and this was one of the latter. <laughs> Buddy, it is a long day. We've been waiting for this for a long time, and it finally happened. So, I mean, that, that that's the good news. And we, we were all surprised, including our very own Leah Merrill, who was very surprised that it broke at 8 o'clock at night because uh, Leah had... Classic. Um, of course it did. Yeah, Leo is not available at eight o'clock tonight. So, so I unfortunately am driving the bus. I will do the best I can, Craig. So bear with me. But to everybody here, this this is a good step forward for the Arizona Coyotes. And I know there's been a lot of chatter online and in on the Twitterverse about that this is never going to happen and they're not going to win an auction. There's not going to be an auction, and this team is moving to Salt Lake. Well, this is just another step in the process with with this date being um, posted, Craig. Tell us a little bit more about the news and the date that this auction will actually be held. Naturally, it's June 27th, PD. When? Or the NHL draft starts in Las Vegas because the Arizona State Land Department does not give a crap about the NHL calendar. They they work on their own calendar. And you, you and I and Leah were talking about this for a while, predicting that it was going to happen right during the draft. They were going to have it. And sure enough, here we are. I want to... I want to dis- dispel a misconception about all of this, um, this delay. Uh, why is it taking so long? It didn't. This is normal. This is the normal process of the Arizona State Land Department. This is the normal process of government. In other words, slow, deliberate. It takes a while to get this stuff done. If you go back and look at other auctions, this is not out of the ordinary for how long it took them to post this. It's it, it, it was nothing nefarious here. There was nothing the Coyotes did here, by the way. This was all up to government processes. We figured it was going to be posted. Yes, we thought it might have been posted slightly sooner than now, but here it is. It's still within the month of June. I still think within the time frame that they were expecting. So away we go, Petey. Yeah, and I think that, Craig, we're going to hammer home a few points here today because I know there's a lot of people that are, are have been dialed into this thing, and, and I want to make that clear right off the top that this has nothing to do with the Coyotes. This has nothing to do with Alex Morello and Javier Gutierrez. This delay is completely on the processes within the government at the state of Arizona. This is, and, and even with them, it's not. It, it's just their regular process. So everything is is fine. Everybody can take a deep breath. The Coyotes did nothing wrong here. They didn't miss paperwork. They didn't miss payments. That everything is fine. So now tell us, Craig, how does the auction work now that we have a date and we have a date? Unfortunately, again, it's too bad you're, you're going to miss the night before the draft. Well, Lee and I are at, uh, uh, in, in, we're researching. Lee and I will be researching the night before the draft. Is that how this is be. playing out, by the way? Is that how this is <laughs> just abandoning you, downtown? You are in charge of news. I'm in charge of hockey, like draft versus auction. I, you figure it out. But, but how does it work now? Like, what's the next step between now and, and that date in June? Here's the crazy thing. People have asked me, oh, is, is it, are they secret bids? When will we know the bidders? Well, first of all, you'll, you'll see in the, the in-depth Q&A that I did with Javier Gutierrez, and then I, I also talked to officials at the Arizona State Land Department. Um, we won't know if there are bidders until the day of the auction. And in fact, it is a live auction where you actually hold up paddles with your bids. There's an auctioneer. It's like, like bidding on livestock. That's what it's going to feel like. So yeah. it's going to be good theater. I I, I know the defer is lurking in the background. I'm not sure we can videotape it. I'm not. I'm not sure if we're allowed to do that. But it'd be really good theater to to, to see that going. Uh, maybe the mullet magician would show up and make a bid. I don't know. But <laughs> I, is, I just, Craig, I'm going to stop you there. A pretty good chance if Leah and I are in Vegas, 
I'm guessing that the mullet magician is not going to miss the fun party in Vegas, but, 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 but maybe he can, he can raise his placard in the auction. The one thing you talked about that, that we don't know who else might be bidding on this auction. My question to that though, Craig, we've, we've talked about the Mayo Clinic and, and we've said, well, the Mayo Clinic is just south of the one-on-one very near the, where, where this land is going. What are your thoughts or what have you heard about the Mayo Clinic going into that site or putting in a bid in at this auction? I literally reached out to Mayo Clinic because I, that was one of the most persistent rumors that Mayo was actually going to be bidding on this land. And I reached out to Mayo and they said, no, we, we're not. We They just purchased a bunch of land just south of the freeway. They have no plans to expand north of the freeway. So you can put that one to bed, but you can imagine how many other rumors there are out there about who's building. Oh, it's Banner Health. It's it's a microchip plant. It's it's whoever. I can't call all these people and, and I'm not going to. We'll just wait to see what happens. I will point out, and this was research, again, done by our diehards. You gotta gotta love our diehards for literally doing our work for us, Petey, which is you know my favorite <laughs> work to do. If you look back to 2017 and all the land auctions that have been held, only 22% of them have had multiple bidders. That means a massive amount, 78% have had a single bidder. And that, that number gets even larger when you look at larger plots of land. Now, does that mean that this will, won't have multiple bidders? I don't know. This is a prime piece of real estate. You know, there's a good chance other people are eyeballing it. But keep in mind, too, you have to have a well-hatched plan when you come to bat here. You can't say, yeah, I, I'll pay for the money and I'm just going to sit on it for 10 years. They want to know what your plan is as well. It's not just simply, okay, you're paying the most money. So that plays into this is all as well. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that there won't be other bidders, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Again, there's, you look at history and say, well, maybe there's a chance he'll be a single bidder. And I've had people tell me there's a really good chance, but then you got other people saying, yeah, this is too good of real estate. Um, I don't, I don't see it going to auction with just a single bidder. So we'll wait and see how that plays out day after. Well, well, there's two things that I want to add to this. There, first of all, this, this land has been available. If somebody wanted this land earlier than this, they were welcome to go through the process that the coyotes are going through right now. So it was this is not available earlier. Oh, I'm sorry, Craig. It is available. That's okay. But that, that's okay. Um, but the, you know, what's interesting is that this isn't the first time the coyotes organization has looked up in this area. They were doing it previously under a previous regime as well. So this is not a novel idea that they were pursuing this. Um, it's just, it's complex and we'll get into all that. I know you have a lot of questions. But, but one of the other questions then, Craig, if, if there are, and we talked about the, the original plan that the Coyotes looked at this, we're looking at 200 acres and yes. they've, they've, they've now, it's a now a hundred acre plot that they're looking at. Are there not other, like with the hundred acres they were looking at previously, is that not another option for another buyer? I guess I'm, what I'm saying is, is if I'm another buyer, and I'm looking at microchip plant or a hospital or what, whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, would I just wait? And, and, and why would I go up against someone else in this bidding process and go next door to the 100 acres next door or the 100 acres to the north of that? I, I'm just curious to why would I would compete with with Alex Morello for the for the land that I could get next door without competing with? Yeah, it's an interesting question because there is another 100 acres right next door. And the thing that the Coyotes are willing to do is they're, they're going to put in all the infrastructure. Again, this is raw land. This does not have roads or sewers or electricity or any of those sorts of improvements. They're willing to pay for all that. So you'd, you'd have it all to hook up to. And it probably saves you cost if you're bidding on the the other 100 acres instead. But I can't I can't speak for bidders that, I, you know, I don't even know if they exist sure. first of all. And I don't know who they are and what their motivations are. So I just can't speculate like that. And it's funny, Craig, because I, I know that there are there are maybe a few people online that might speculate about things. We've we've seen some people on Twitter speculate about things. So I'm sure that will be the next the next between now and June 27th. We are going to hear about all of the people that are going to be buying this land because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of a lot of rumors and speculation on that land. But but here's the next question. We've we've talked about Alex Morello's finances before. And we've talked about, you know, some of some of his issues in Glendale, which we've clearly gone through on this show multiple times that really weren't issues. We've talked about his finances when it came to the Tempe project. This project right now is a minimum, a minimum in, in the 68, 69 million dollar range is what they're what they're saying for the, the opening bid, 68 and a half million dollars. How is Alex Morello going to pay for this? Yeah. And listen, they're they're the, It's the same assets, basically, that he set aside for Tempe. That, that's how he's going to do it. Now, there is a there there is by statute, you have to close within 30 days. Now, I've been told that there have been 
extensions with massive projects like home builders, for instance. So there may be some discretion, but my understanding, actually, I, I quoted Javier Gutierrez saying they're, they're going to do it within 30 days and the, the plan is to pay cash. So um, that that's what I've been told. That is their plan to to close this. Now, of course, if the bid keeps going up, it, it gets interesting, right? If you it, how, how high are they willing to go? I'm, and I'm going to stress this one over and over again throughout the show. Alex Morello wanted to get to this point. He wanted this opportunity to make amends for what happened in Tempe. He doesn't want to sell. It's all on him now. It's on him. This, this, I believe this is the last chance for the Morello ownership group. And, and Javier said it too. Look, this is it. We got to do this or we have to talk about relocation of this franchise. So it is on Alex Morello alone to win this bid now, whatever it takes. If he's not willing to go, to a higher price if there are multiple builders? Well, that apparently spells the end of the Arizona Coyotes. So just, uh, again, I'm going to keep reiterating reiterating that, but it is all on Alex Morello. He wanted this. He's going to get the opportunity now. One other thing I want to clarify here, Craig, if people are listening in, and, and again, we talk about the internet rumors and the Twitter rumors. This isn't stuff that you're speculating. Like you, You've talked to people regarding this issue, right? Like you, This is informed reporting. Am I not correct? Yeah, I mean, I've tried anyway, Petey. I've, I've tried to call as many sources as possible. Obviously, I've spoken to the Arizona State Land Department. I've spoken to lo local politicians to get an understanding. I've talked to some of our own politicos who are diehards as well. I mean, Kat Coleman created that incredible graphic for us to understand this process that was occurring right now. Um, so leaned on a lot of people and obviously talked to the Coyotes and to the National Hockey League as well to get their sentiments on all of this. But yeah, I, I've tried to reach out to as many sources as possible to get an understanding of this. Again, we're, when we when we step outside the rink, it gets a lot more complex. And, and yes, I've been doing this for far too long, for 15 years plus, chasing, you know, city council stories. I, I, I'm on the first name basis with three city councils in this city that that shouldn't have happened ever. I'm, I'm familiar with different government processes that I probably never imagined I would be, but it's part of the job. It, it's what it was required to report on this story. So I'm trying. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying all the information I put out is going to be spot on, but I'm reaching out to as many sources to try and understand it as possible. One other thing, Craig, before we move on, because you just mentioned it, you're a reporter and you're a writer. And and I'm I'm assuming this this has story kind of written all over it. Are we expecting a story? Is there a story out? Can we get more information? Can we find the written information you've been able to gather? Is there somewhere we can find all of this written down? Yeah, it's already up on gophnx.com. I had a lengthy Q&A with Javier Gutierrez, Gutierrez, who is the president and CEO of the club, of course, also spoke to Arizona State Land Department officials. And then there's some other additional information in there. I spoke to Commissioner Gary Bettman, and there was this wild rumor that we'll get to later in the podcast. So I actually reached out once again to Glendale City Manager Kevin Phelps because there's a wild rumor. <laughs> so as we say, Craig, in, in people that report, these are actual facts. Just checking. Like you talk to people and these are facts. And you actually named the people that gave you these this information. So that's great. I want to get to a couple of super chats before we continue on. We're going to go to Roaring Fork. It gave us a $5 super chat. There's not a chance all of the PHNX diehards are in Vegas for the draft and we get bad news on an auction loss, right? Oh, buddy. Roaring Fork, hopefully I'm right by your side and we'll be all over the Four Peaks because they do have it in, in Vegas. And then John Whitaker with a $10 super chat. How will, yeah, a couple of months and we find out if the five years we'll be in the Phoenix Coyotes once again. A Phoenix Coyotes, could they do that? They could. I didn't think of that. Also, a couple of months till we find out how long I have to get out to the mullet. Well, you got to get to a mullet if you haven't been out to the mullet yet. So, Craig, here's the, here's the next question. We've talked about how he gets, when the date is. We've talked about the potential competitors. We've talked about how he's going to come up with the money for this. The next question is, if he wins on June 27th, then what happens? What is the timeline if Alex Morello is able to secure this and, and win the auction? Well, I mentioned the close close window already. Um, again, this is raw land, so it needs a lot of development. Now, they're not going to have to do any archaeological studies or anything of that nature because they've already done it, actually. There's, there's, there's no environmental studies that need to be completed. That's all in the bank already. Of course, we have the concerns about floods, Petey, which are not concerns at all. Buddy, I'm not going to get into the floods. And I, I just live in the same floodplain. I'm 10 minutes, up, well, not 10, I'm five minutes down the road from this. We have a rain gauge. We had three inches of rain over the last you seven days. 
Yeah, it, it is. It is in stilts. We have three inches of rain in Arizona. And to keep that for people that are outside of the Arizona area, three inches of rain is more than a half of years of rain in one week. And there's no floods. There's that we did have a puddle. There was a puddle. But but it's not going to affect building and and even even on that point, I did happen to talk to Javier Gutierrez at the ice den, and he said well, there will be more flood mitigation. I mean, there there is not that is not an issue. There are so many buildings around this area that it is not going to be an issue. There would be responsible for that flood mitigation. It's so that is not a process and a solution, right? It's it's that simple, right? Do do what every other developer in that area has had to do. It's it's not an issue. Exactly. And, and and so now we talk about timelines. You talk about building that infrastructure. Well, and, and here's here's what I have to say to the NIMBYs, the, the not in my backyard people, Craig, because I, I, I'm there and, and I, I, I I live with them. And I sincerely I've talked to these people in the when I'm walking my dog in the morning and they've said, well, what about the traffic? And again, I've, I've talked to Javier about this too. There, there are going to be traffic improvements on the 101 in Scottsdale in that surrounding area. It's not like they're going to have the, the roads that they have right now and they're going to have all this influx of, you know, of housing and, and arena and, and events and they're not going to improve the infrastructure. So I'm trying to tell people that it's not going to affect our daily lives up here. And, and I'm trying to get the support of those people. So, so the infrastructure, I think, is important. And again, who's paying for that infrastructure, Craig? Yeah, it's the Coyotes. And uh, it... Another thing to point out, and you pointed this out to me with the location right at the northwest corner of Scottsdale Road and the 101, it's right off the freeway. Yeah. What, are, what are people going to do when they, they leave the arena or, you know, they're going to hop right on the freeway. That's what they're yeah. going to do. They're it's not like coming to my neighborhood. Neighborhoods. I don't I'm know not even inviting you over to my neighborhood. not happening yet. Go ahead. You know, I'm not inviting you. So you've talked about this before, too. This isn't the first time they've looked at this area. Yeah. And you've talked about when we go to go back to to previous management and mm -hmm. before Javier Gutierrez and they've looked at land near here or, or in this location. What do you know about that? Yeah, I, I know that they explored it so before they started uh, looking at other possibilities like ASU. Um, and funny, the Coyotes came back to Tempe as well. But I, I don't I don't know that I want to get too much into that history as much as talk about how this the pursuit of this piece of land uh, started. There was this narrative that. The Coyotes were idle after they lost the Tempe vote back in May. Oh, they, what, what were they? They weren't doing anything. Well, in fact, they they put in the bid for this this land. They started this process one month after they the Tempe vote failed. And as Cat Coleman told me, an experienced politico, that's really fast. Actually, to, the way they've gotten this process done, it's really fast. Actually, when you consider the entire process, they were not idle. They were working, and we know they were looking at other sites as well. We reported about the Mesa site that they put a, a letter of intent, and in. they they had a letter of an intent in, on another site as well. So they were not idle. They were trying to find a solution. This was the one that they settled on, mostly because of the zoning that's available. It allows for basically everything that they want to do. In, in, that they wanted to do in Tempe, but there's actually a greater height restriction so they can go higher. And you know what else they don't have? They don't have the the bogus threat of the airport, you know, yeah. air, air, airport safety to, to worry about uh, bogus uh, lawsuits coming from Phoenix Sky Harbor. Okay, well, that brings up a good point. So there is no airport opposition because that's not a concern here in, in North Phoenix. But surely there will be opposition because there's always opposition. It's, what, find, what I find interesting, Craig, is again when I drive by this location, there's a there's a premium uh, luxury condo building going up uh, on the southeast corner right now, yeah. you know, literally across the freeway. I, I didn't hear a big rumbling about complaints and and building happening there. It's just ironic they're building something near the Desert Ridge Marketplace, which is just to the west of this proposed location. It's just interesting that the, the people aren't getting opposition to those projects, but I'm sure opposition is coming for this project. Where? Might that come from? Well, I want to start by saying where it won't be coming from. There, there's no public referendum here, like there was in Tempe. Which, if you if you harken back to the start of this process, they realized, okay, we can't have a public referendum because there's there's no appetite for these sorts of uh, developments, whether whether people are fully informed on how they're being funded or not. Because we saw a lot of the misinformation that was flowing in Tempe, but there will be no referendum. There are no jeeplets here either. So. I can't say for certain because I don't know the law well enough, but I don't know that they're going to be concerned about the gift clause. Like, is Goldwater Institute going to come after him? Goldwater was, wasn't coming after him in Tempe either. Right. I think they they the structure of it was such that Goldwater wasn't concerned. And and my understanding is that the, the structure is much the same here. Again, no G-plits, though. So don't have to worry about that. That said, 
as Javier told me in the interview that that's up on GoPHNX right now, anybody can sue you at any time. Right. What, what can you do about it? Like there could be a citizens group that decides to sue you. The same union that was coming after them in Tempe that wanted to use their own union labor on the site and wanted it to be a full union job, even though that doesn't happen anywhere in Arizona, they could come after them again. Who knows how this will play out? I want to be clear on the union too. People are like, oh, they weren't willing to use any union labor. In fact, they were, they were about like 20% or whatever it was, they were going to use union labor on the Tempe site. It just wasn't that union. So that will be a part of this project as well. We'll see if there is opposition from that group. Honestly, I fully expect it. So yeah, and, and you do, for you, sure. You deal with the lawsuits. You handle it. You, you, you go through that normal process. It is what it is. I'm not sure, though, that any of those sorts of challenges can stop construction. And that's an important point. Yeah, and the other thing, Craig, and I want to ask and make this clear too, because we went through Tempe and a lot of these things that led up to the Tempe vote, very similar to what we're talking about now. But I want to make it clear to everybody too that, that there isn't going to be a vote here. Like the, the, there is nothing to vote on here. Like the, the people of North Phoenix are not going to be voting if this arena is going to be built. Am I correct in that assumption? You are. Yeah. As I just said, no referendum here. Okay, so so we, we check that box. So lawsuits, okay, that happens. And, and honestly, we'll see. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if if you do say some of these things. I, I don't know about the community, but 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 the the um, the the unions that may 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 very well be. So what else has to happen on this site, Craig? Like what? Like we talked about this being raw land. Yeah. It's just a desert right now. So yeah. what has to happen before they can put shovels in the ground? Well, aside from all the improvements that I just mentioned, like uh, sewers and electrical and roads, I mean, you're talking about there's there's a wash that has to be completed. Actually, that is going to be completed through this area as well. Um, but then like uh, the, the timeline, you asked me about the timeline earlier and I didn't fully finish it yeah. the plan right now is for them to put shovels in the ground in the second quarter of 2025. So basically a year from now, their plan, they're tracking right now to put shovels in the ground. Will that happen? Look, Petey, I don't know. Construction timelines are crazy. There's all sorts of variables at play here. Who knows if this will play out? But that is what they're saying right now, the, the timeline for putting shovels in the ground to begin actual construction of the arena, not the rest of the entertainment district, the arena first, because it will be the first thing that they build that should – should be starting in the second quarter of 2025. And so that, well, let's follow that timeline then. So when, if you start then, and with, we've seen a lot of the comments in the chat about the team being currently in mullet mm -hmm. and how long one, w does that mean that this team will continue to play at mall arena? And two, are there any other options, including Glendale? <laughs> It, let me let me start with Glendale because I've I've heard some people mentioning oh you know the 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 PA is not going to be happy they're not going to want them playing in mullet yeah, they're definitely not going to be happy but honestly there's there's not much that the PA can do they they don't have power to change this and by the way the PA signed off with the NHL on them playing at mullet I hear this rumor out there too or or this narrative that oh they were only supposed to play here two years three max that's not true they signed a three year agreement with an option for a fourth year and there was an option to extend it beyond that, that ASU is amenable to. Now they have to talk about it when they want to extend past four years, but for four years, they were set. ASU had already agreed to that, and there was a lot of talk that they were going to need it. So the plan right now with construction timeline is three more seasons at Mullet Arena. That means five total seasons at Mullet Arena if they keep to this timeline. That would be, I mean, it, if the remediation of the Tempe land had taken longer than originally expected, and it might have because... There's a lot of stuff in that dump, as you know, Petey, because you flew a kite there. I, I was there. Uh, it, it may have been, it may have tracked to the same timeline. But may, maybe it is still a little longer. Um, again, they expected to be at Mullet for four years. So this, this is one year additional if, again, a big if, if they stick to this timeline with the construction. So they are definitely going to be at Mullet for three more years if they win this land auction and start this process. But but you mentioned that Craig, and it's something I want to say because it's it's come across. I've seen it on Twitter this week. I mean, we've seen it on 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 the internet for well ever since the Coyotes started playing there. Is well, it's a disgrace. It's a joke. The league shouldn't play there. This this can't happen again. I, I, the only reason I'm bringing it up again because you've already said it. But but is there any recourse for anybody? Like if, if like the PA doesn't like it, it stinks, and all the others. But I saw somebody say, "Oh, there's bleachers there." Like, does anybody have any recourse? Because I, and the only reason I bring it up is the Oakland A's came out today and announced they're playing in a very small stadium that's less than half of the the. Oh, it's the way less than half. 
especially yeah. if it's, it's like 10,000 seats. It's but, when you look at the percentage, it's even a smaller percentage of their capacity before than Mullet is to Gila River Arena. It's interesting, isn't it? So, so I wonder if people will be doing the same thing and they're, they're years in, in Sacramento. So I'm just curious to see if there's, if anybody has any recourse on, Hey, this stinks. The PA said this stinks and fans in Canada, apparently because they watch it on TV and they don't like it. I don't know what the sight lines are for television cameras in Quebec, but apparently they're bad and they don't like it. Um, but the people here don't seem to mind. Does anybody have any recourse at Mullet Arena? Just the league. Just the league. I mean, unless you're, we're talking about individual players who decide, you know what? I don't want to play three to four more years at Mullet Arena. Trade sure. That you, we could have another Jacob Chickwood situation, right? Where uh, another player requests a trade and that's, that's within their rights. I, I don't Absolutely. blame them. They don't want to do that. Plus it means like, let, let's be realistic about this. If they're playing at Mullet Arena, they're probably still in a rebuild PD, right? So do you want sure. to get that much of your, the prime of your career to playing in this arena and knowing that your team's probably not going to be a playoff team. If a player decides at that point, you know what? I want to move on. That's within their rights, like completely understandable. But as far as the PA or another group coming in and saying, yeah, this can't happen anymore. No, they don't have any power. The league has already signed off on this being an NHL arena. They came in and got it up to spec. They had to build the annex to have the, the proper locker rooms. Both the PA and the NHL signed off on Mullet yep. Arena as an NHL arena. And I know it was with the understanding that it was going to be temporary and a, maybe a slightly shorter tenure, but they did sign off on it. So if the league turns around and says, Sorry, we're staying for another year. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the league. And we've talked about Mullet. We know where their appetite is for that. They, they Again, you said they signed off on it. Let's talk about where they are with this timeline, meaning we've heard a lot of rumors about relocation. We've talked about Salt Lake City. We've said, oh, they, this can't happen. Um, but, but we also heard from the league that's very supportive of one, this ownership group. We've heard it recently. He's intended to buy this land and we're, we're going to stay and see if he does that. Do you have any, like we're at the point now where the auction has been announced yep. and Morello is, is clearly going to be a bidder. Do you have any sense that the league is, is trying to back out of this? The league is looking at, at relocation or is the league going to let this process ride through at least through the auction? My gut says they're going to let this ride to the auction. And, and that's based on conversations with NHL commissioner, Gary Bettman. Now, could they be doing something behind the scenes that I don't know about that they don't want to tell me about? Of course. And I'm not going to say that, that I know everything that the league is planning. And trust me, Gary Bettman's got contingency plans. He has with every other relocation rumor here. We've talked about this on the shows before. How many times before has he used another possibility as leverage? Mark Chipman, for right. instance. How many times has that happened before? Gary's going to have his contingencies because you have to. Sure. He's just smart operating. But as he has told me, we want the team in Arizona. Obviously, Alex wants to get to get win the auction to make that happen. So unless I'm reading the tea leaves entirely wrong, my sense is the league is going to let this go to auction as Alex Morello's last chance to keep this team. And I've seen a comment from Bill Daly too, Craig, that that if this auction is into mid or late June, which it now uh, apparently you know it's it's announced it's June twenty seventh, so it is going to be later in June. I, I've seen a comment from Bill Daly that if it, it is mid to late June, that they're going to have a difficulty in, in moving this team by the fall of twenty twenty four. What's your sense on that? Do you see this like it, again? We're talking about this is the balls in Morello's court. He brings yeah. his checkbook. He wins this bid. I don't see there's any way any way that the NHL is moving this team in the fall of 2024 if, if Alex Morello wins this bid in June? What well, are your thoughts? What would be the point if he, if he wins the bid? That w w Why did you let him go through this exercise if you're going to pull the team? That doesn't make any sense to me. Now, the, the question for me is, like, if he loses it, do they have time to move it? I, you know, Bill Daly did not say definitively. He sure. said probably not. And he's an attorney. So sure. I, you know, when, I, when I hear that sort of thing, I'm like, yeah, they probably could. And and people keep talking, oh, they got to make the schedule. They can just make two schedules, guys. It's not right. that hard to make two schedules, one with Salt Lake, one with Arizona. So stop with that stupid narrative because there, there's a way around that. Sure. Uh, if they lose this auction, is there a possibility they stay one more year in Arizona? Sure. But do I feel like this is it for Alex Morello? Absolutely. It's yeah. on him. As I said before, it is on him to show up and win the auction. And you've said that before, Craig, and, and the feeling from Alex Morello, or excuse me, from Javier Gutierrez, CEO and president is if they don't win this auction, it's the beginning of the end. So I don't think that's any big news. And again, 
I want to make this clear. That doesn't necessarily mean that this team is leaving the Phoenix metro area. It doesn't by any stretch of the magic. And this, there, there are rumored other buyers. This, this opens a let's, whole let's another. Go and go there right now because we've talked about the possibility sure. of other local buyers before. I, you know, I had people laughing at me when I said, you know, there might be other potential local buyers. We've mentioned Matt Ishbia, who's not sure. going to step into this fray publicly while the team is not for sale. It's just Which we've bad. said for months, Craig. We've said, we've that, said that, for that for months. I know that there are other groups here as well that are interested. John Gambadoro reported today that Alex Morello has had conversations with them. Didn't say when those conversations were. Didn't cite any sources. Didn't have any other new information in that story, I might want to point out. But it's not the first time that we've heard that there may have been conversations with other groups. There have been national reports about this as well. There was a there was a national report that the Salt Lake group had offered money for this team. So it's been out there before. It's not like this is a revelation um, I don't know if anything has happened recently. It didn't say in that story. Um, but again, I do th I, I do think that possibility was there. I just don't know all the details behind it. How real is that interest? What's the price that they would have to pay? Are they willing to go there? I don't know all of that. So it's it's a lot of speculation. It's but I want to get I want to talk to you about this because I know and these might be hallway conversations and I've been a part of those too. I've seen a, Alex Morello Senior and I've seen Javier Gutierrez and we've talked to them, yeah. and all the sense I get personally mm -hmm. from talking to them in the hallway and I've seen them personally. The the what I get from them is they are absolutely one hundred percent committed to winning this auction. But now if they're lying to me and playing a big joke on me. Maybe, but that the, the what I am getting personally is that they intend to win this auction, and, and, and I don't know where this narrative is that the, that no secretly you know why would you go through all of these hoops? Why would you do all of these things to get this auction and the, and the state land available for auction, and then go you know what? By the way, I was just kidding. I'm actually selling to somebody else. Like I, I, I just don't understand that narrative. It does. It doesn't. Doesn't met. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it either. And the vibe that you get when you're around the Morellos or when you're around Javier is, first of all, I wrote when Alex Morello took over this team, his history is to purchase distressed assets, strip them down, which he's done here, and then build them up. But he doesn't sell them. He doesn't sell these properties that he acquires. He hangs onto them. That's mm -hmm. been his. I don't get the sense that he wants this. I, I think this is personal. I think this is this is partly ego, which it often is in sports, right? I think this, I, I really think he wants to win this auction and prove that he can get this done. And I think that's being discounted a little too much. I know there are people out there that are saying, oh, I don't think he has the money. Listen, I, I don't know. I haven't seen Alex Morello's yeah. books or finances and, and neither have any of those people who are questioning it. So sure laugh when I hear that. Oh, I, I'm not sure he has the money. Well, what the hell do you know? Just shut up exactly. and have actual information about that. But you know what, what those people say? What I will say is that Tempe went through an incredible vetting process, very detailed vetting process with Alex right. Morello. And, and as finances. you heard from Hugh Holman, who was on our show, former mayor, who was part of this, they liked what they saw. They were content with what they saw from Alex Morello's finances, and they were willing to move forward with the TED, the Tempe Entertainment District. Yeah, yeah, he's the only guy that we're talking about that actually owns by himself a casino on the Las Vegas Strip. I think the dude's doing okay, so I'm not too worried about it. And and I agree, Craig. I think there is there's part of the ego in this, and and I've got a sense of that from when you're around Muller Arena. I, I think this is yeah. You guys don't think I can do this? Well, I, I'm going to show you. And it's and one of the things that brings me to that point too is when you said from from the Tempe deal to to what we're talking about now in north phoenix it, it isn't a year later it really isn't Th this process started so much sooner i want to talk about the team though and we talked about the ability for players and, and they may they may say you know what i want out i i want out of this beyond that do yeah. you see this being any effect on the guys that are that are still in this locker room is it is it a positive news is it a positive message or is it hey i'm just gonna go to the rink tomorrow or where, where do you think this stands with the team i think most people in this organization are at the point where they're like, I want to see beams in the ground before I believe this sure. is real, right. There's so much that still has to happen on this land. Just because you win the auction doesn't mean you get to the point where you're putting shovels in the earth and you're literally laying beams and starting the construction of the arena. I think that's when it will feel real to people before we get to that point. I think people will be skeptical. And I think the skepticism is earned when you look at the sure. history, right? At the Tempe vote wasn't the only arena deal that didn't go through. They had a they had a deal on the table with ASU as well, and they backed away from that. So there have been a couple fits and starts with this ownership group as well. 
they need to prove it to to their people. They really do. So, so here's what I want to talk about next, Craig, because again, this is in my neighborhood. And I know, unfortunately, you will have to drive from southeast New Mexico. I am not sure where, where you live, but it's a long way away. I know I drove it on St. Patrick's Day, but but it's down the street from me. And and I, I've talked to my wife and we're actually kind of excited about it because we've seen the drawings. We, yeah. And we've talked about what's actually going here. Do you have any sense beyond a hockey arena? What else can we be looking forward to on this site at, at Scottsdale and 101? Yeah, and a lot of this, and as we know, the the rendering, some of the renderings were leaked uh, ahead of time, but they're all on that story that I have at GoPHNX as well, as well as a video, and it, a video where you can sort of zoom through the entire site. There will be an arena. There will be a practice arena with a training facility. I don't know yet. I haven't been able to confirm whether that practice arena has one or two sheets of ice, but you can see from the overhead that there's a practice arena, and there's that, that cool atrium that connects the two of them. Oh. Yeah, you should take a look at the renderings. And listen, Word of caution, artist renderings aren't necessarily what you see on the final sure. page, right? How many how many times have we seen that happen? Uh, you know, look at the Westgate development. It was supposed to be much larger than it was. So grain of salt there. But there, there's plans for a rink and a, a practice rink. There's going to be restaurants, shops, retail. Um, there are going to be, I think, 1,900 residential units. There's There might be hospitality, hotels as well. So pretty much everything uh, that you saw before, right, with – the Tempe project you're going to see on this site. There will be some, of course, adjustments for the actual site itself, but this is a big project still with a, with a lot of offerings that will really improve your neighborhood, PD. It'll be a yeah. destination. It's funny if people have been down Fremont Street in Las Vegas and you've seen the overhead light show with all the LED things on the overhang that, that, that covers Fremont Street. I talked to Javier about this uh, last week and it's something very similar to that. And, and it's meant to cover one, the sun in Arizona in the middle of, uh, of the summer, but it's also meant to cover the rain in the winter and, and it's still open air on the sides. He, he was explaining to me and honest, I, I'm not kidding about this. And this isn't, this isn't for, for the podcast. I'm literally excited about this. We need more, more, more entertainment, more dining, and, and to have that covered, uh, I'm, I'm sincerely excited. But I did say this, Craig, and this is what we're going to step aside from the facts for a minute. If this is five minutes from my house, so you are going to start going to the studio, and I am going to start going to the games because there's no way I'm driving all the way down town to cover this team. Just, just saying, just but saying, I, you'll be doing that. I'm, I'm using your guest room. I don't know if I told you that. But. But you're literally the only person in the PHNX staff that's actually been to my house. And that, that may never change. If, if people know, they know. We've, we've got another super chat. Wow. Okay. From Sammy D. Will the Coyotes practice facility be like a great park ice, which is a practice facility for the Anaheim Ducks? It has four sheets of ice. Do you see the practice facility having four sheets of ice? And I would say right now, I would say no. Um, that that practice facility in Anaheim is absolutely phenomenal. They hold the oh, rookie yes. tournament there. It's a fantastic facility with restaurants and a bar upstairs. It's fantastic. I don't foresee that here again. It's you got to look at the marketplace and what this market can bear for more ice sheets. I, I would consider one. I, I'd be surprised if it had two. Um, <laughs> I can look at the defense lock does live by here. That's the, true. The magic, yeah, the magic behind the Mac. Yeah. Is not is not Abraka Danielle today. It's it's Shane the Diefenlock Diefenbach, and, and he has lived not too far from this either. Might be able to take a bike. It might, it's a it's a little bit of a bike ride. Another topic I'm going to talk into Craig before we start uh, wrapping this up and, and doing a summary on what's talking about. I want to talk about something else that that came out on the internet. We talked about John Gamador's article, and he's been trying to sell. I think this auction being posted to me starts to starts to put some of those rumors to rest. I, I don't think if, if Alex Morello senior can buy and win this auction, he's not selling the team. So, so that report, I think we can say maybe a, a little premature or maybe from something previously. Known. Or listen, I, I don't want to discount the possibility that that's due diligence as well. Correct. Now, listen, I've, I've had for backup plans had leaks okay. to say, no, that's just made up garbage. That's not right. true. But I don't want to discount the possibility that they're doing due diligence and they have options in case in case falls through. But I do believe Alex wants to win this auction. I, I again, I think this is personal to him. I think he wants to keep the team and win this auction. Put it, put the arena there. Yeah, so I, I do think that Craig, that that's his first option. I, I, I do. I, I don't think he's looking to sell the team and he's going. Oh, hey, I'm going to do this auction in June. But if I sell the team before June, I won't go to the auction. I don't believe that for one second. But I want to talk about something else that came out online. Um, 
and I, I just think we want to address it is is this story that that the Arizona Coyotes cannot sign contracts. We talked about it briefly on our post game show last night that the Arizona Coyotes cannot sign contracts, and there's a freeze on contract signing, whether that's mandated by the owner, the league, or management, whatever that may be, because the the person that wrote the story, and I'm not even going to say his name, the person that wrote the story didn't clarify if if that mandate came from ownership, management, or the league that 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 the Arizona Coyotes could not sign any players right now. They could not sign any contracts right now because of the uncertainty of the arena situation. And then this morning they sign a player. What what are your thoughts on, on that whole narrative right now? Uh, that it's completely false. Just completely. Even, false. even though they said the word fact in it more than twice? Listen, first of all, they yeah, they, they signed Sam Lipkin. So that was kind of a, a blow to the narrative. And then if you want to maintain, oh, we're just talking about free agents. They have negotiations going on with their free agents right now. They just haven't reached that point yet. There's no freeze. I'm, I'm sorry. That that narrative is dead false. It's incorrect. It's just wrong, yeah. right? It's to, clear. It's wrong. I reached out to five agents. I talked to the team. I even talked to the league thinking, oh, maybe the league put some sort of edict in place. And Bill Daly said on the record, no, not true. Not even a consideration. So, yeah, it's 100% false. Okay. And I just want to clear that up too, because I know that those narratives run and, and again, across North America, and then I have to say North America, because what we see in Canada, it often comes into, Hey, let's pick on the Coyotes again. Like let's pick on this team. And, and it's funny. It's, I, we had people in the chat picking on this team that were from Anaheim. Buddy, have you looked at the standings? Like, relax. Trevor Zegers has four goals this season. Like, relax, buddy. Like, pick on who you pick on. Like, glass houses. Heard of it? I, I guess my point is, it's just, it's it's these narratives, it's so easy to pick on a, a team that's on the rise. And, and again, I, I'm just going to talk about the team just real briefly. Click. You, you, you've talked about Josh Doan. Dylan Gunther, Logan Cooley. You, you've seen what more, uh, Geeky did today. Geeky's the, the 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 Western Hockey League Central Player of the Year in his division. There are brighter days ahead. And I think what's funny with, with this announcement of the auction is I think the timeline falls right into place of when this rebuild is going to get through to the end. And you go, oh, my goodness, we've got yeah. a new building. And do you see our roster right now? Yeah, that's tough news for people to hear that it's still that far away. I know people want it accelerated more than that. But I, again, I think Bill Armstrong has been pretty transparent about how long rebuilds actually take. And if you go back through history and look at the, the, the successful teams, it wasn't two, three, four years. It took longer than that. That's, I mean, if you get a, if you get a franchise player in the draft, it might speed things up, but short of that, good luck. I mean, I, I, it, it's going to take that long. So I, I think you're right. If again, if this all plays out according to this timeline, that could be right around the time where we really start to see this team take a, a big step forward where they're, you know, you want them to be a consistent playoff contender. Obviously everyone wants to win cups, but baby steps start with, let's start with just making the playoffs on a consistent basis because we haven't seen that around here. There's been one playoff berth in the past 12 seasons and that was only because of the bubble. So let's get there first and then see what comes after that. Yeah, but I do want to I want to put a bow on that too, Craig, is is how positive the future is hockey-wise. I mean, that's why I'm on this show, because I, I get to talk about hockey, and I look at what they have in the prospect pipeline. We talk about what they have going on in, in the KHL right now. We talk about what's going on with in the juniors with Maverick Lamru and, and Geeky and, and the, the people that Sam Limpkin just get signed today, and who knows what his ceiling is. The future is bright, and, and we talk about Clayton Keller's 25 years old, and you've seen what Josh Doan has done for this team. There are so many positive stories that I think that this franchise needs to finally get past the arena yeah. because I, I think fans are tired of it. Employees are tired of it. Players are tired of it. Media are tired of it. They need to get past this narrative of the arena. And I think that is finally, finally coming to, 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 to fruition that we're finally going to be able to move past that. Yeah. And you understand the skepticism, right? You were, I mean, listen, you were on the inside. You saw it for a very long time. I understand the skepticism of everybody involved in this organization. And most of them, that we're talking about haven't been around nearly as long as you and I have to see all the stuff that's gone down with this right. franchise over the past 15 years. It's warranted. It's been, it's been a mess. Let's just be honest. It's been a mess for a very long time. They got to get this piece in place. We've been saying it forever. It's a broken record. They have to get the arena yeah. piece in place. If they can do that, however, as I've been saying over and over again, as you have been saying over again, I have so much faith in this hockey operations staff. Uh, some of it has just been a matter of resources in the past. They haven't had the full staff. They haven't been able to spend the money to have the type of staff. But this scouting staff, this development staff, this management staff, 
is the best I've ever seen with the Coyotes. That's not hyperbola. That's not just me with recency bias. That's me being objective in evaluating all the pieces that are in place. These guys know what they're doing. Let them finish the job. Yes, it would be nice to get lucky and, and win a lottery or two, like some of the other teams that get lauded for how great a job they did for building a franchise when they got the number one overall pick in the draft. The Coyotes haven't had that luxury, but I really like a lot of what I'm seeing. So it would be nice to see them be able to see this through to fruition and, like you said, step into that new arena at just the right time. Yeah, it's funny because I I've heard this today. I, I got somebody DM me today in my Twitter account that I'm just a homer. I'm just a fan. I'm just I'm a fan's and it's positive. And buddy, <laughs> if you knew my history, not as positive as you might think. Well, my point is, I want hockey here in Arizona. I want NHL hockey to be in Arizona. I've always wanted that, and, and it's not selfish. It's I think if you want to see Austin Matthews and Matthew Nyes and Josh Doan and those kind of players coming up through the Arizona hockey system, I think you need professional hockey here in Arizona. I want this team to stay here. And it doesn't mean I have my pom-poms out for the Arizona Coyotes because I think I've always been fair. And I think Craig is always fair. And I think we're, we're, we're very, very, we go into everything my eyes wide open. Yes, we want a team here. And I really think that this is the first step to finally getting things right in Arizona. And I've also heard that Morello doesn't spend money well let's look at his revenue streams right now at the mall arena yeah we'll, we'll be honest the, he doesn't have the revenue streams that you need to spend to the cap plus when you spend to the cap you're, you're trying to win i'm sorry that this team is not trying to win right now they're rebuilding so they're not spending to the cap now if alex Merlo gets the arena wins the auction puts shovels in the ground and gets those revenue streams then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be the first guy to say they need to spend more money so they can finally become a perennial playoff team. You cannot do what you said, Craig, and win consistently without spending money. I, I will be the first guy there saying, yes, he needs to spend money, but he hasn't had the opportunity to do that yet. They're not in a position where spending money helps. But he has, and, just to just to one point, though, he has invested in important areas that we were just absolutely. talking about. Scouting development management, right? He's invested in those areas. Absolutely he has. And we've talked about that with, with Bill Armstrong multiple times. And, and I think when you talk about salaries and contracts of players and we're talking about putting money into that area, it's when you're ready to win. And, and we've seen franchises, including this one, put money at a player like Taylor Hall at the wrong time. And you're literally just throwing money away. And, and so I, I think that they're following a good a good timeline on what's going on. So so let's it, we've been going on a little bit longer, Craig. I just want to talk about let's let's wrap this up for people that may have joined late or, or, or that need to hear the summary of what's going on. Let's go with the date is June 27th. There will be a auction for the hundred acres at the northwest corner of the 101 and Scottsdale Road. Yeah. Yeah, 110 raw acres. I think it's 95 actual acres. I don't even know what that means, raw acres. I don't either, raw acres. I don't care. That, that part I'm okay with not understanding. It's a live auction with, with cards. There will be an auctioneer. I don't want to go that, so bad. you got to develop the, the land with all these improvements that we've talked about, sewage, uh, with electricity, with roads. That all has to happen. Um, and as we said earlier, the hope – Right now, they are tracking to have shovels in the ground the second quarter of 2025. We'll see if that happens. But in the meantime, that means three more seasons at Mullet Arena for the Coyotes. Okay, Craig, I think that summed it up pretty good. Any other comments you want to have in closing as we, and I want to say this too, for Coyote fans and people that are tuning in, that people have to take all of the brunt of the, the comments that you see online and on Twitter. I think this is a good day. I think this is a positive day. I think this is a step in the right direction. Now, is this across the finish line? No. This is not done yet. I, I get it. There's more hurdles to go over and more hoops to go through. But I think this is a good day for Coyotes fans and for everybody that tunes into PHNX. Uh, I think this is something that we can we can be happy about and, and 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 have a toast and raise our glasses to. It's a step. It's an important step. They had to take this step. And I know there were people that were skeptical that this was even going to happen. I'm not sure why. That's just a probably more a lack of understanding of government processes than anything else. But this is a step. Now, obviously, the big step is Alex Morello shows up at the auction and wins the auction. If that happens, then it gets interesting because, you, you, first of all, he, he's got to close on the land. We know all that. But it seems like they have a plan in place. To me, the big one here is you have to win the auction. Once that's in place, 
they have the site and we'll see what comes after that. But that's a really big, that's the next big step. And unfortunately, yeah. GD, it happens literally the day before the draft. So. <laughs> no, it's just good. I hate to say this, Craig, have fun because you're going to be helicoptering back and forth between here and Vegas. Leah and I will hold down the fort at wherever we're hosting our party for the diehards because we will be. Um, I, I do want to say thanks to everybody that tuned in today. And I do, I, I know a lot of people that tuned in are the PHNX Coyotes diehards. And they're the ones that have been through this battle for a very, very long time. And I want to say thank you. And I want to say this is a very positive step in the right direction. I'm so glad you're part of the PHNX community because I think if you want to know what's going on with the Arizona Coyotes, the, the Phoenix Suns, the Arizona Diamondbacks, ASU, U of A, I'm forgetting somebody, oh, the Cardinals, because they drive the bus around here. If, if you want to know what's going on with any of those teams and you want to follow uh, any sport in the state of Arizona, make sure you're you're following PHNX and jump on the PHNX YouTube channel and subscribe. And, and if you want to hear this on audio and follow us, because Craig has all of his stuff, all of his contents at gophnx.com, follow his writing. And you can get us wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you listen to the PHNX Coyotes podcast. Follow me at S. Peters Hockey, Craig at Craig S. Morgan, the show at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Stay tuned. Tomorrow night, we'll be at another post game show live as soon as the Phoenix. Phoenix. Can well, you believe I just said that, Craig? Be soon, buddy. I did, buddy. Be I did soon. so well. Yes, I, I think so possible. well. You know how much pressure possible. this is? I think you might do. Also. It might be a premonition. I, I do too. Bad. But be, I will say this to Leah Merrill, who is not here. This is hard. Like the hosting and driving the bus. Leah Merrill is elite. And unfortunately, she was not here tonight. So I had to drive the bus. I have marbles in my mouth most of the time. I stumble through these things. I apologize. I meant to say we will be live in a post-game show tomorrow night after the Arizona Coyotes face the Vegas Golden Knights at Mullet Arena. Craig will dial in and call. So make sure you subscribe to the PHNX YouTube channel and don't miss any of the video content we, we put out here at PHNX. I, again, thanks everybody for joining. I think this is a positive step for the Arizona Coyotes. This is great news, and I can't wait to see everybody tomorrow night after the postgame show. For Craig, I'm Petey. This is PHNX, and we'll see you at the rink. We all city like the mayor.